Hello, Quentin Brown here with you and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create graphics if you don't have Photoshop. We're using a program called Pixlr. It has a lot of great little functions and the two functions we use most is our editor and I also use Pixlr Grabber. So if you're using Firefox or Chrome you can go and get the Grabber and it will create a little icon like this for you. So for example, if we're doing a mobile website for this company, one of our customers, we just use the grab defined area and it might open up anywhere on the screen, but it's just then a matter of selecting their image and just drag these boxes out to the size you want. I always make it a little bit bigger and then edit it in Pixlr. And then once you click the crop, it'll ask you if you want to save it to your desktop, share or edit. So I'm going to edit it in Pixlr. And so here it is. Quite often I like to use these little drag icons on the bottom just to expand out the picture a little bit to make it easier. I'm going to use my marquee tool and I'm just going to create a box here and I'm going to fill it and use my paintbrush just to blacken all that information there. Next thing I'm going to do is just go and choose my white and go OK. Click on the A. I'm just going to write in here tap to call. I'm going to make it bold and just move it around so it fits in properly. Go OK. Now I'm just going to crop that by using my marquee tool. Put a little bit of yellow around it so it looks good. And then go image and crop. Now here's a nice header from my mobile site. And instead of having that button down here with the tap to call, I can make it so this image will be tap to call. So we'll just go file, save. We want to save it as a JPEG for now and it's already named it for us. So we'll just go OK. I've actually already saved it here. So I'll just save over the top and go yes. Now I want to create icons or buttons as well. So we'll go file new image. But this time we're going to make it 300 by 300. You can use these and use the slider, however it's just easier. And I'm going to use transparent and go OK. I'm going to use this drawing tool. And I want to use these rounded corners. And I'm going to make this 65. I want to make choose the color in here to be yellow. And this information here, I also want it to be yellow. Go OK. If you wanted a black border around it, you could have left this as black and it would have created a border. However, this time I'm just going to have it plain. And it's just a matter of putting your cursor in there and dragging till you get the size you want. And here it is. We don't need this anymore. So I'll go, no. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my marquee tool again and I'm going to create that footer for this image and I'm going to go edit and copy and notice it's control C control V so control C to copy I'm going to go new image it's already selected the size for me I want it transparent go OK and then I'm just going to paste in there I'm going to change this to black and OK and I'm going to use my paintbrush and I'm going to make this about 40 so it fills it all in nicely. And just click. Notice it's still got a few little yellow areas. So Control Z. So that looks good. So I've made it 90. I'm just going to drag this out a little bit and again use my marquee tool to copy it all. Instead of going up to edit this time, I'm just going to go Control and C and control and V. Notice it's created a new layer for us. And that's the beauty of using 
Pixlr as it uses layers just like Photoshop. So now we've got our nice picture here. Next thing I want to do is add some text. I'm just going to change this to white again. I'm just using my selector. Go OK. I can close this one now. Don't want to save it. I'll use my text and in here we'll put contact. I like to use all uppercase for these. It just makes it straighter and you don't have any drop downs. Let me move this up for you. We'll make this bold. And that should be all right. Make sure when you put your text in here to try and work out what is going to be your biggest lettering. So quite often testimonies will be the biggest. So make sure it fits before you do your final type. So that's fine. So we'll use contact now. And we'll center that. Just drag and drop it where you want it. Just click on our move tool and you can move it around wherever you like. Once again, you can see it's created a layer. The beauty of this is you can turn them on and off. Now make sure you go in here and sign up for an account. I'm just going to log in quickly. I'm going to click on Remember Me. So now that I'm actually logged in, I can go and save this. And I want to put it in my Pixlr library. I want to actually make it a PXD layered. So it'll keep all these layers for me. And next time I can come in and use that same file. So icon and go OK. And so now when I come back in next time, I can open image from library and here's my icon image and just go open. And here it is back again. So now I can just do the same thing, just change the colors, etc. for my next icon. Now I want to put a picture in here. I'm just going to go to Google Images and I'm going to type in here T-A-C-T-P-N-G because I want a transparent PNG. And these are all basically generic icons you can use. So when you find one, just click on it. Go right click and copy image URL. Go File, Open Image URL and just go Control V and paste that image URL. And when you see these squares behind it, it means that it's a transparent image. So that's what we want. So we'll just select that. Go Control C for Copy. Click on our icon file and go Control V for Paste. Now again, go into Edit, Free, Transform. Just by dragging on the boxes, and moving it around, we can get it exactly how we want. As you can see, because it's a transparent image, it's showing the information in the back. Go Yes to apply. Once again, I could save this now. Go Save. I can do it a PXD and this time I'll put Contact and go OK. So next time I come in, I can just open this up, change the color in the background for another customer and I've got my icons all ready to go. Now that we've done that, we want to flatten that image. So flatten. So it now no longer has any layers. And an interesting point down here is history. You can go back through your history and go back to where you were before if you make a mistake. But now that we've got that, we want to change the image size to 150. And we've got constraints on, so it will do it automatically for us. We can now go save that image. But this time, we'll make it a JPG. We'll leave it at that at the moment. And we'll go to our computer. So we need to click on computer. And we've got our icon contact save. Now making the buttons is very similar. In here we'll go file new and make it say 400 by 100. Transparent again. And we'll call it button. 
and OK. So once again, we want to change this color to that yellow. OK, and use our draw tool again. We probably don't want 65, maybe 35 will be enough. We've got our color here and our color here and we can just draw our button. If we change this to say black and I'll hit Control Z, it will do one with a black border just to make it nicer. Once again, we'll click in here, go home. We'll click our text and we'll go contact and move it around. Make it bold again go OK. Now we could change that to black. See how it looks. Highlight it. Just go here to black. OK, so that looks quite good. Or we could do the white and do a drop shadow. OK, and to do the white drop shadow, we just right click on contact, go to layer styles and click on drop shadow and maybe make this 5 and this 5 maybe make this 3 and go OK so now we've got a nice image for our button once again I would go and save save into my pixel library call it contact save it as our pixler and go OK and now I'll go and save it to my computer. So when I come back, I can just open that up. So we want to save it to my computer, JPEG and button contact and save. Now to really crunch down these graphics, I use a program called Infran View. So just go to downloads and install the program. Then make sure once you've installed it, go to plugins and install the plugin. And then once you've installed it, this is what it looks like. So then it's just a matter of opening those files that we just created. So this one. And go File, Save for Web. You'll notice next to it says Plugin. And at the moment it's 10. And as you can see, we can change it and get the color down a little bit and make it a bit smaller. And so we just go Save over the top. Now when we open up our Composer, we can go to our index page. Let's just add that new image, which was contact, icon contact. In our header, we made that tire house. We can just add that image up here. Go image properties, class, and logo. And again, just go into our source. Go back to our design. Let's have a look in our browser. Bring it down. And as you can see, looks pretty good. We don't need this tap to call anymore. So we can get rid of that and save and refresh. So that gives us a little bit more places to play. And as you can see, here's our icon that we just created, very similar to this one. And so that's basically how we do our images for our mobile websites. My name is Quentin Brown, hoping you enjoyed this short tutorial on images.